Dr. Alex Benzakos. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. In closing, okay, okay. No, I, I just had to, to do that. Uh, let me start. I can't, obviously can't see people in the back, but uh, by raise of hands, I can get a general uh, estimate here. How many of you in the audience have found the meaning of life? Raise your hand. <laughs> you got here. Okay, so there are a few of you. Okay, keep your hands up a little bit. Okay, everybody else look around. At the end of this talk, please go see them for the answer. Okay. All right. I just wanted to get that context. Uh, I'm a recovering academic. <laughs> and so one of the problems as a recovering academic is that I have to consolidate at least 16 weeks, a semester course, into a few minutes. And the timekeeper, fortunately, is going to keep me on track. But so fortunately, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, so I can speak very quickly. And then if we get this on the web, you can slow it down on your, on your own. <laughs> All right. What I'm, what I'm going to share with you really does have a lot to do because we've been talking about the inspiration for this TEDx event being Viktor Frankl, who, as you all know, was my mentor. And I'm you know, really happy to see, and not only to open up the event today, but also to see quotes and so forth. And I noticed that there, you know, different people have been talking to me about, you know, how did I meet Dr. Frankl and what was his impact on my life and so forth. And let me tell you, I mean, the human quest for meaning is a mega trend of the 21st century. All right, more and more people are looking at meaning because they are seeing so many meaningless things in their lives, including their work lives, that people are starting to really look at meaning as maybe the salvation or the, the, uh, the opportunity to find what the Greeks, and I'm going to be getting a Greeks, uh, give you a Greek lesson here in a little bit, the good life, as Socrates would say. We call it living the meaningful life. And so Viktor Frankl was really the, you know, the master, the grandmaster uh, in meaning. He, he had a, a ministry, a medical ministry, that was really out to not only use meaning as a way to conduct therapy, but it was also a way to spiritualize uh, medicine and the practice of medicine, which again has Greek roots. You're going to hear a lot of that word. The word Greek is going to happen many, many times over the next few minutes. And so the idea here is, is think about what the word would be like if all of us we're living and working with meaning. Wouldn't it be a great place? I mean, maybe some of the things, because this talk has been influenced so much by the other talks preceding me. I mean, it's amazing, not just the inspirational stories, but the, the formidable challenges that everybody's had to go through. And so it's hard not to be influenced by that. And the more I hear these stories, the more I realize when we start talking about war versus peace, and we start talking about people who can't really express themselves fully, uh, civil human rights, I mean, all these things, these are all meaningful values that all of us should be, as, as Dr. Franco would say, authentically committed to achieving and realizing those. So that's really the essence of what I'm going to share with you. And what I'm going to try to do is give you an opportunity to learn a little bit from my ancestors, my ancient Greek ancestors, uh, in terms of what they've contributed. Because the Greeks, as you all know, over the last few years have been going through tremendous challenges. All right. I mean, the economic crisis, I mean, people come to me and they're, you know, they act as if Greece is responsible for the global economic fallout. <laughs> or that little teeny country, <clears throat> there's almost as many people in Hong Kong as there is in Greece. But that little teeny country in the Mediterranean that invented and offered so many things to Western civilization is now being used as a scapegoat for a lot of things. Now, fortunately, we have a Greek cousin, Cyprus, that's now getting more attention. <laughs> okay. But the idea here is we really are looking for what can we learn from a culture that offered for thousands of years so much, just like China has. And there's a lot of kindred spirit. One of the reasons that I decided to come to this event, because the invitation was, to me, was a, was a humbling and honoring opportunity to not only share with you the search for meaning a la Viktor Frankl, but also to be able to share with you some of the things that come from my heritage. So that's really what this is all about. And I've spent a, a number of, of years, even prior to the economic crisis, going to Greece, looking and not only reconnecting with my heritage, but also looking at what Greek philosophers, going back to the ancients, many of whom were contemporaries of Confucius and Lao Tzu and the Buddha, but also looking at traditional Greek culture. And what can we learn from that and bring that back here? Because as Elaine and I, have experience in Greece, there are many things, even within the confines of all these challenges, that people seem to be living, believe it or not, a good 
slash meaningful life. And so we were trying to figure out what's their formula? What is it about this? So what I'm going to share with you is a concept. And it's going to be a very easy concept in many respects to remember and to practice. And by the time we end this talk, I'm hoping that this will be something that will carry with you after you leave here today and that you'll be able to carry forth in your work life and in your everyday life. So let me share with you. In going to Greece over the last several years, one of the things that we've picked up many, many times is we heard a word that I'm sure most of you have heard. It's a word, the Greek word now, oppa. Okay, how many of you heard the, the, the word oppa? Okay, I mean, most, most of you have. And I'm not talking about the German reference to grandfather. Okay, you know, I'm talking about the Greek word. And typically that word, that opa word, is typically used, or at least heard, particularly here in North America and Western Europe, it's heard in t at times of celebration. You know, maybe you're breaking plates at a restaurant, maybe you're at a, at a festival, maybe you're at a wedding, you're dancing, and opa is really an uplifting, enthusiastic type of thing. Well, interestingly enough, Opa, the word, has common, as, as a common Greek word, goes back to ancient Greece. And actually, we found it and traced it back to the writings of Homer. You all heard the word Homer? I'm not talking about the TV character. <laughs> okay? You're right, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And Homer was able to articulate, and the history of the word Opa emerged in really a unique way. As a matter of fact, in a way that's almost uh, a, uh, analogous to uh, the Chinese philosophy and the symbol, the yin and the yang. Because in Greek, in the Greek alphabet, there are two O's. There's one that looks like R-O in English, Omicron. And then there's another O, another letter O, that looks in the capital like a horseshoe. And I know you see it around. It's the Omega. And the Omega sign, like Omega watches. So there's two O's. So O-P-A in Greek has two different references, two different meanings even. The O that looks like R-O is that expression of spirit. Actually, we refer to it as enthusiasm. The English word enthusiasm actually comes from two Greek words, and it actually means manifesting the spirit within. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about you know, team spirit, individual spirit, and so forth. And that's really what this is. So that's when we see the celebratory kind of use of OPA. That's what you hear about when you see in the movies. I mean, I'm sure you've seen my big fat Greek wedding. Yeah. Okay? That's all of our family, isn't it? <laughs> okay? So the idea here is that that's the OPA. But when Homer was writing about OPA, there was also the other side. And the other side of OPA is the Omega OPA. And the Omega OPA is reference goes back to opening up our eyes, being awake, looking for danger in our path, as well as looking for opportunities. Okay? Now, unfortunately, to the Greeks in the modern times, especially the last number of years, they kind of forget or forgot the Omega OPA. That's what got them into trouble. They weren't looking down the road to see whether or not there was some danger down the path. Okay? The economic crisis is obviously one result of that. All right, we're going to spend too much, we're going to do things, we're trying to keep up with other parts of the world, and we're not really doing the kind of planning and maybe the kind of management that they should have done in terms of making sure they protect themselves. But the idea here is that those two types of OPA words, Omega and Omicron, are like two sides of the same coin. It's the <coughs> Greek version of the yin and the yang. It's the idea you've got to have both and integrate both to live your life fully. Okay, so that goes back to the ancients. But if we look, now, at more current context, what we've done is we said, well, wait a minute. We can take OPA, and we can actually create an acronym using O, P, and A. So let me just share with you quickly what they are. The O in OPA means connect meaningfully with others. Others is the O. We have heard all day today so many people saying how important it is to connect with others, haven't we? Okay? When you're in times of stress, when you're depressed. I mean, Viktor Frankl once said, back at the time of World War II when he was writing, he said, you know what? Society is plagued with three major problems. He referred to them as the mass neurotic triad. The three are aggression. Has aggression gone away since World War II? Not at all. As a matter of fact, aggression is probably more. We have more types of aggression than Viktor Frankl probably even dreamt of. Okay? Depression. Has depression got away? No, what we're hearing a lot is that depression is increasing. Clinical depression is on the rise, particularly among young people. So depression certainly hasn't gone away. All right? And addiction. All right? So aggression, depression, and addiction are three things that Viktor Frankl described as major societal problems at a time that you think we would have been focusing on resolving. And instead, 
They've been exacerbated over the years. So the idea here is, is that we, you know, we have to deal with those kinds of issues. So the idea of connecting meaningfully with others is one way to deal with those. Reach out when you're depressed. We heard that today. Okay? Reach out when there's aggression and try to find people to help you. All right? This is an important element. So connecting meaningfully with others. That, but that's a major problem in our society today. You know, we have Facebook. We have all these social media. But yet, in many respects, we're more disconnected than ever. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So this is the kind of thing. So the authentic connections, these meaningful connections are very important. And this is the kind of thing that we found in Greece. Because when we went into Greece and we went into villages and some stories of, of going to visit the village and having people taking you into their little, almost a hut, and sharing with you and making you feel, because that's part of what the Greek notion of hospitality, it's all about taking care of each other and taking care of strangers. And if any of you have traveled to Greece, you probably have recognized that Greek hospitality is worldwide. I mean, talk about the hospitality industry. You can't get anything better than that in terms of feeling welcomed. And that's a major part in all of our travels and all of our experiences. And it's not just because I have family throughout Greece. It's the fact that I've, had, I've talked to thousands of people. And they've all experienced that notion. If we could just apply that kind of Greek hospitality to our own world. I mean, think about it. We go to a traditional Greek village, and they treat each other as villagers. We talk about a global village, don't we? We say it takes a village to raise a child, but we don't treat each other like villagers. We're strangers, OK? So O is connect meaningfully with others. The P in the OPA acronym is engage with deeper purpose. We've heard that many times. The idea is we need to find our purpose. You know, Viktor Frankl, and based on Viktor Frankl's work, one of the things that I espouse is that we've all heard the statement, where there's a will, there's a way. You all heard that? OK, but we're going to add to that. Where there's a purpose, there's a will. OK, so where there's a will, there's a way. But where there's a purpose, there's a will. And so, so many of the speakers today have talked about that. When they were able to identify and articulate a purpose, their will increased. Their desire to live increased. They were willing to go through the fire, whatever. I mean, we've heard so many things here that are like remarkable. And, and it wasn't just today. I mean, I've, this entire time I've been here, it's been amazing the kind of in, inspirational stories. So engage with deeper purpose. And then the A is something that, again, we've all probably most would attribute to many crazy Greeks. It's attitude. The idea behind this is embrace all of life with attitude. I'm not talking about positive psychology. I'm not talking about trying to just say, well, we've got to be focused on happiness. As a matter of fact, Victor Frankl said very clearly, very profoundly, he said, happiness cannot be pursued. Happiness can only ensue from doing something to help others beyond yourself or to be in service. So think about that. Your most happy moments usually come when you're not even noticing them. You weren't planning them. But if you try to be happy by going out and partying all night, and I, I notice a lot of people party in Hong Kong. <laughs> OK. All right, maybe they're happy. I don't know. Or you're shopping until you drop. Doesn't necessarily mean you're happy. So the idea behind happiness here, again, part of it is a mindset. It's, it's, it's the notion of attitude. And, and again, I heard a number of people today in their talks talk about the, the importance of your choice of attitude. And again, the first principle of logotherapy and Viktor Frankl's logotherapy is the fact that every one of us, every one of us as human beings, have the ultimate freedom to choose our attitude. And Frankl survived four Nazi concentration camps. You know, I look at my life. I never, never would compare my life to Viktor Frankl's. But as a US Army veteran, Vietnam era, I mean, I have many times where I could have taken a quick dive and never come back up again. But part of my passion, part of my enthusiasm for life revolves around the fact that many of my own brothers and sisters didn't make it. So I'm living my life with enthusiasm, with passion, not just for me, but it would be arrogant of me. It would be totally you know, uh, something that I couldn't even imagine that I was given the opportunity that they weren't. They died at you know, age 18, 19, 20, 21. And I was given an opportunity to be 25. <laughs> okay, you know, so the idea here is that attitude is a very, very important part. And there are many exercises, there are many ways of dealing with it. And I know a lot of people say, well, you know, I already have an attitude, why would I change it? 
Um, that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> okay, okay. But you know, there are ways of how we can get ourselves out of that inner mental concentration camp, outside of that, that box that kind of shuts us in. Because we heard so many people again talking you know, about the challenges they had about, well, how can I have a, a good day? You know, I have a bad hair day. You know, is that all you have? That's your biggest problem is a bad hair day. All right? I mean, it's, it's amazing. Think, but think about the possibilities of, do you want to take the high road or do you want to take the low road in terms of your life? Where, which way do you want to go? All right? And so the idea behind exercising the freedom to choose your attitude is important, but it's also important to recognize it within the A construct of OPA. Attitude isn't just about having a good attitude. It's also being able to have a positive, resilient attitude when times aren't going so well, right? Because life is about ups and downs. If you think about a heart monitor and you think about balance, what happens when the heart monitor is a straight line? Okay? Are you excited about life? <laughs> no. All right. The heart monitor shows a wave, which basically means sometimes it's going to take a dip. So our resilience factor, which is really what this whole event is about, is about how do you deal with the dips? You know, and not just say I'm ecstatic about all the great times. And so those are critical, critical issues. So the whole concept here now of OPA is, again, O stands for what? Others. 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 All right, P stands for what? Purpose. Purpose. And A stands for what? Attitude. Okay, so together we have, say it together, others, attitude. purpose, attitude. attitude. So what does that mean? OPA. OPA. So what I want you to do is that from here on out, whenever you're finding yourself stressed out, all right, I'm gonna give you a quick example. I have a second here to do this. Because we're all adults in this room, right? If I can do this. I'm not gonna take my clothes off, don't worry. All right, let me just imagine you're walking down a sidewalk and there's the sidewalk is crooked. And I notice again in Hong Kong, a lot of steps. <laughs> I don't know how many times I almost uh, you know, twisted my ankle. And you're walking along and you trip. Okay, as an adult, what do you normally do when you trip? What's the first thing you do? You look around. You wanna make sure nobody saw you. Right, because you're embarrassed. All right, you're afraid that somebody. Oh my God, I didn't do it. It was uh, you know, city of Hong Kong. They screwed up. Okay, the issue is what I want you to do is when that happens in life, and you take a trip, I want you after your trip to go like this. Oppa. Okay. All right. So this is the thing. So I want everybody to stand up. Okay, because this is your last thing here. All right, and I want everybody in a count of three. And I'm going to go backwards, three, two, one. I want you, without hitting your, your sidekicks here, I want everybody at the top of your lungs to say, okay, three, two, one. Thank you very much.